you made it through Hell Week the first go round, but you didn't make week. it through the entire program. So you had to do this all over again. Day one, day start, day one, all over three times. Excuse me. Let's get it right. Three times. The first time, two five zero. I make it through the first three four weeks of training, which is it's no joke because they really they really trying to break everybody's. They're trying to break as many guys as possible so that not, not that many guys even get to hell. Uh huh. So you might start out with 270, 260. By the time you get to Hell Week, you're going into Hell Week with like 80 people. Okay? I got to Hell Week, Monday of Hell Week. I got to Hell Week starts on Sunday and ends on Friday. Made it through Sunday night of Hell Week. Made it through Monday night of Hell Week. I get to Tuesday. I started Hell Week with pneumonia and sight and rhabdo, but I didn't want to go to medical and tell him I had, I didn't know I had, I just knew I, I was a medic. So I was spitting up blood before I even started training, before I started Hell Week. And being a medic, I knew it was swim-induced pulmonary edema because a lot of guys get it because they're in the water so much. You swallow water, your lungs get infected. And so I knew I had it. And, but I didn't want to go to medical and tell him I had it because if I did, they were going to make me, they were going to pull me out of training and make me go back to day one. And I was like, I can't go back to day one again. That's her, this is horrendous. <laughs> so I was like, let me go through Hell Week, crush it. After Hell Week, I'll get a break, and then I can continue on with my class. I get to two week, at, two day, I get to Tuesday of Hell Week, and I literally almost died. I had my sweat, my sight, swim induced pulmonary edema, turn into pneumonia. I had sight, I had pneumonia, I had rhabdo, which my my, my body couldn't repair itself, so it started eating its feet, eating away at itself. And then I had my low, my core temperature at one point dropped to 88.8. I had severe hypothermia. And I almost died. I, you know, I got, so I got pulled out of Hell Week on Tuesday. I, got, I was in the ICU for like a week, recovering. Yeah. And then when I got out of the ICU, the instructors were just like, welcome to day one. <laughs> so I had to go back to day one all over again. But... You know, being from the Bronx, I was like, you know, it is what it is. Let's go, let's get it in, you know. <laughs> and so I start day one. I go through three, four weeks of training again. Watch hundred plus dudes quit, maybe two hundred dudes quit. Go to Hell Week, make it through Hell Week. After I make it through Hell Week, I had failed my two mile time ocean swim. At the time, you had to pass at least one time evolution in the entire phase in order to graduate to the next phase of training. And I had failed my time evolution, my swims. And so the instructors liked me. They was like, you know, Remy's a hard dude. He done made it through hell week, you know, twice pretty much, first phase. Let's, med, let's, let's performance roll him so we could get him right with the swimming so that this dude can make it through training because we like him. He's a hard dude. So they did that. They double rolled me two class, put me in a swim program. After, towards the end of my swim program, I'm swimming. I'm passing my swims. However, I'm getting cocky. I'm getting arrogant. And that's something that, you know, has always been a problem for me historically. And it's a problem with a lot of people that when you become successful, success is very dangerous because if you don't know how to handle it properly, it's going to lead to pride. And pride ultimately leads to a fall. And so here I am. I'd have made it through the Bronx. I made it through Africa. I made it in the Bronx. I made it through Hell Week twice. I made it through first phase. You can't tell me nothing. Nobody can't tell. And I'm the only black dude in the class. You can't tell me nothing. And so on the weekends, I'm out partying, going to the club, gas lamp. Girls like, yo, what do you do for them? I'm like, yeah, I'm lying. I'm like, yeah, I'm a seal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lying. And the instructors on, the, on their weekend, on the off time, they offered re remediation, which meant if you struggled in any area of training, the instructors would show up on Saturday and Sunday, and they would work with you in that area to ensure that you get through training. Anybody. And I was too hungover, and I was in other girls' beds and too tired to go because I had been partying that I never showed up. And that's where my downfall started. And, you know, I, I got to second phase, which was dive phase. You know, I got to the fourth week of dive phase, which is pool week, third or fourth week, and I failed a test four times. And the instructors were like, I failed a dive test four times. It was called the tread with dive gear on. And the instructor said, you know what, Remy? You a good dude. But you, you just, we rolled you twice. You failed your first two swims in dive phase. You failed this dive test. You got to get rid of it. 
and I got kicked out of SEAL training. But that was my first time in my adult life I took responsibility for my actions, you know, and, and, and because all before that, it was always this person, it was always a white man, it was always this person, my mom, sis. and that was the first time I was like, damn, man, I was like, I did it to myself. You know, and that's where I learned the key lesson. A failure is only a failure if you don't learn from it. But if you learn from it, it's a lesson. And, you know, the lesson that I took out of that failure was never show up to anything in life unprepared. And don't show up to SEAL training and not know what I was swear probably. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I got kicked out of SEAL training. I went to the 1st Marine Division. The very next day after I got kicked out of SEAL training, I was in the pool working on everything. I didn't know if I was going to get a chance to go back. But I knew that if I did, I was going to be prepared. And you know, I do I do about a year and a half, two years with the Marines as a medic because I was a I was a Navy corpsman, and Marines don't have medics, so they use Navy corpsmen. And and so you know, I did that for a year and a half, did a deployment with them, and then I came back and uh, I, I, I went day one, day one, first phase. Let's get it in. Went through that. Got to Hell Week. Let's get it in. Went through that. How many days is Hell Week? Is that about five it's, days? It's six days. It starts six on days. Sunday and ends on Friday. No sleep. No sleep. You get, you get, you get, well, I rephrase that. You get two hours on Wednesday and two hours on Thursday. So it starts on Sunday. You get hammered. Wednesday, you get two hours if you get that far. Most guys can't even sleep because it's only two hours and you're just so wired by that day. And then it ends on Friday. And it's just torture. It's pretty much they torture you for six days. And uh, they're just trying to weed out the week, you know. And I made it through Hell Week, made it through second phase, made it through third phase, graduated. Graduated from BUDS, a class. Of, and then, you know, after I graduated from BUDS, I went to jump school. After jump school, I went to um, Sears school, survival school, where they throw you out in the wilderness, chase you. <clears throat> you got to learn how to survive on your own. And then after SEER school, I went to SQT, which is SEAL qualification training. Um, did all the tactic stuff that all SEALs have to go through in order to go to your SEAL team. Graduate. And the class that I graduated with started with 270. 29 of us graduated. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.